Now let's get to the main topic for the for this week, which is business level strategy. We're going to start with defining business level strategy. As is probably a somewhat obvious statement at this stage in this course, and probably was obvious before we even got to the course, um, strategy is increasingly important to a firm's success. I'd, I'd argue this is a this use of increasingly is a term that comes from the text. I'd actually argue that it always has been important to a firm's success. Whether it's been identified as strategy is another thing, but companies that have understood how to implement strategy, formulate and implement strategy, have been more successful. And strategy, by definition, is concerned with making choices amongst multiple alternatives. The choices are dictated by both the external environment, which we've talked about, and the internal resources, capabilities, and core competencies, which we also talked about. This is really week one and week two of the course. Business level strategy is defined as the integrated and coordinated set of commitments and actions that a firm uses to gain a competitive advantage by exploiting its core competencies in specific product markets. So it really is the sort of integration, the bringing together of the both understanding of the external environment and then the internal resources, capabilities, and core competencies in a way that you're best positioned to exploit them in a, and um, meet customer needs in a specific market. When you define business level strategy, its core or foundational element is the satisfaction of customers. You need to be able to understand how to manage relationships with customers. You need to have reach, richness, and affiliation in the re relationships that you develop with customers. You need to understand who you'll be serving, what needs you'll be satisfying for those customers, and how those needs will be satisfied by your company. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking in some detail about those, um, those factors in this next section, which is the relationship between customers and strategy. Firms are, develop a str strategic competitiveness when they're able to satisfy their customers by using their competitive advantages. It's really the addition of the couple of concepts I just mentioned and the core concepts that we've talked about up to this point in the course. Every successful company knows how either to do one or both of the following, which is satisfy current customer needs. That keeps customers happy and meet new customer needs, which means they're either expanding the relationship they have with existing customers or expanding their customer base. The relationship between the customer and strategy is driven by the five components I described previously. The first is the effective management of relationship with those customers. Let's go into a little more detail about that. That's where you deliver superior value or you have strong interaction relationships with the customer or both. You develop at the core a reason for the customer to want to maintain a relationship with you, either at the value end of the continuum, which means you're priced better than everyone else, or you create a product which is so vastly superior to everybody else's product in a way that I want it, that I'm willing to pay more for it, and therefore it still has value to me. Or you've developed such a core sort of personal relationship with me or perception of a personal relationship with me um, that is interactive, that is uh, by definition maybe even collaborative, that it, I feel that I cannot leave the relationship I have with you, and therefore um, I'm able to, uh, the, the, therefore I um, am driven to stay with you as a part of your strategy. This grows, um, this sort of fundamental capacity to manage relationships grows with the more reach, richness, and affiliation that you can develop with your clients. And the way that you do that is, first, you need to have access to your customers and a strong connection to your customers. To the extent that you are uh, disintermediated from your customer by someone else, by a, um, some other party, uh, for whatever reason, it, it becomes more difficult for you to understand the needs of your customers. Uh, 
you also need to have depth and detail in terms of the two-way flow, two flow of information between your firm and your customers. The more that your customers share with you and the more they understand about what you're doing, the more that they feel that they have an affiliation with you that goes beyond just a consumer who happens to be serviced by you or sold to, and that facilitates useful interactions that the customer views as valuable. Let me use as an example uh, my own industry, which is life insurance. I'm part of Mass Mutual. Mass Mutual has a what's described as a career agency system. That means that our insurance products, life insurance, uh, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, retirement products, are distributed through a tied agency system um, where agents are essentially work in independent firms that have a strong, strongly linked relationship with Mass Mutual. Those agents in those agencies are most successful not when they consistently get on the phone and call customers to sell them more of our products. To the extent that a customer gets a call saying, I've got something to sell to you, that does not create reach or richness or affiliation. Instead, the relationship is strengthened to the extent that they provide strong financial services advice to the extent that they are valued as an advisor, a personal advisor to the client, to the customer at the end of the day. So uh, an agent who calls up and says, look, I don't have anything to sell to you, but I do have some thoughts about ways that you should be thinking about your personal finances. just want to go over them with you, walk through with you some things you could be doing it will not result in a sale. I don't have anything to sell to you at this moment. It's just that as you think about your, your long-term plans in terms of finances, these are some things you can consider. To the extent that the agent follows through and gives the customer real advice and um, is viewed as somebody who really is more advisory rather than sales-oriented, when there is an opportunity to sell a particular product that fits into that broader financial plan, the agent's more likely to be able to sell it because the customer is going to view that relationship as much richer, as having a sense of affiliation, of, of collaboration, and to the extent that there's a collaborative customer relationship, car, company customer relationship or agent customer relationship, the, it's more likely that that customer will come back to that agent for advice and may even seek out the agent before the agent has something to sell to the customer. The remaining three components are sort of the equivalent of the journalistic questions in the five components. The first is who, and that's determining which customers you're going to serve as a company. Um, this is the sort of core of marketing. It is the focus on market, market segmenta segmentation. Uh, many of you have are probably already taken a marketing course and are quite familiar with the, with the concept of market segmentation. For those of you who aren't, I'm going to just cover it very quickly. Um, essentially, market segmentation is when you divide customers into groups based on differences in needs. And then you, you're, the process is used to cluster people with similar needs into individual and identifiable groups that, in turn, um, you can focus your efforts on. So knowing whether there's you segment by age or you segment by culture or segment by income um, or consumer category or industrial markets or whatever may be appropriate, it allows you then to figure out which customers you're going after, whether you're going after all segments, in other words, all age groups, or a particular age group helps you define exactly who it is that you need to focus your customer relationship activities on. The what, which is really the needs of the customer, determining what it is that they want you to satisfy for them. It's related to, in your products, benefits and features, uh, what is it you include and don't include? Um, and you need to, be, need to anticipate and be prepared to provide the features the customers want. Are they driven by high quality? Are they driven by low price? And that will translate into features and performance capabilities that you will offer to the customer. It's important to note here that often people believe that if I offer more, it's better. It's the sort of engineering concept. If I over-engineer, I put every bell and whistle on a product, the customer is going to love it. Again, coming back to my industry in life insurance, um, the uh, financial services or life insurance equivalent of an engineer is an actuary. Actuaries can make life insurance products incredibly complex. 
in every complexity may have some hypothetical benefit to a customer, but to the extent that it gets so complicated and so bleeding edge in terms of innovation, the customer may not care, but each of those bits of innovation may cost the customer some more and may price you out of the market for the customer because the customer doesn't see the value in the innovation. And when we get to uh, the topic which we're going to be discussing later, which is blue ocean strategy, you'll see that value innovation is a critical element of strategic management. It's understanding the balance between creating value for the customer and creating uniqueness and innovation, which will differentiate you um, in, in terms of developing the right products that need meet both current needs of your customer, but also anticipate needs of customers that they may not have thought about today. But if you present the need correctly to them, they may ultimately be willing to pay for something they hadn't thought they needed. And finally, the how. So it's the who, what, how, as I said, sort of like journalistic questions. And it's determining the core competencies you need to satisfy your customers' needs. Let's remember from our earlier lectures, core competencies are the resources and capabilities that serve as sources of competitive advantage for a firm over its rivals. So the how equals your core competencies. It's what am I going to use of my, out of my bag of tricks to meet and satisfy either existing or future needs of my customers with a value orientation in a way that meets those needs and meets the right the needs of the customers that I've identified as being my core customers. <laughs>